Hello and welcome to Sin Lighting. So today I would, um, I've, I think I'm now on gag to talk about what I could not talk about. So back in November, Canon reached out um, that, they on, that they wanted to do some, do a hush hush about the issue. They wanted to do some tests, right? And in my mind, I was like, okay. My head was like thinking about the C500 Mark II and some summary action and stuff like that. So we went there and lo and hold, it was the 1DX Mark III life in the flesh no rumors here so i don't know when you'll be watching this but i'm sure you already caught up to a lot of what is going on already so i i couldn't like put everything in my head so i'll read from what i've actually wrote down you get so we actually got to try the 1dx um mark 3 right and first hand the camera is just a mini a micro if you say the c500 mark 2 is a mini c700 the 1DX Mark III is a macro C700. I can't say micro because it's not this year big. It is year tall and maybe year big, something like that. So yeah, first things first, highlight. Before we went in, there was this whole, what, what, what do we expect from it? And, what, and I was not even expecting anything at the point. So I was like, okay, so first, if you can shoot raw like the C200, have a lot of capabilities like, um, the C500 Mark II, and maybe do some high speed action, maybe not so much high speed, and maybe no 4K crop. I really don't give too much about the crop. Um, so when the camera came in, uh, we went to like the Formula One racetrack and we had some test shots, which I will share with you as soon as I can get my footage back because we're like gagged up and our footage were like taken, or most of the things we shot were. So yeah, there's that bit. I will share that with you. But first of all, right, the camera actually shoots 5.4K raw, like full frame readout raw. Like imagine C200, but with full frame capabilities, no crop at all, one ratio to one ratio. Um, a couple of things that I wish I actually liked about the camera with that entire raw workflow. If you're into VFX or you do more heavy, intense color processing, that really sets you right off the back. So you have like a raw capable camera, yeah, this big. It could be like a secondary camera to um, the C500 Mark II or your C700. So think of it like you're trying to do like a car rig or put a dashboard cam or do a couple of things whereby um, the C500 Mark II or C700 may not fit into the spaces. You could get this camera like yeah in there and you could actually do all you actually um, want of it to do. It shoots the normal frame rate. It does up to 60p in RAW. Um, it does up to 120 in in, um, in HD. And when it's not shooting RAW, it also shoots 10-bit um, XFAVC. But inside the container, it's actually H.265. Yeah. So you get H.265 full 422 um, readout that's from color sampling, not um, 8-bit 420 or um, the other weird, all the formats that, that comes up. And you all get you get all this flavor in log. And I, not, I noticed the log that's activated in that camera was actually, um, it's very similar to C-Log 2. So you get same um, or close to the same amount of latitudes that you expect. Yeah, same amount of latitudes. I've not compared them like on my screen, so I can actually say for a technical file, it's same. But it's really, really pretty close to what comes out of your C700 and comes out of your um, C500 Mark II, or well, what to expect from those cameras, because the same sensor and the same readout is what's actually been used in, um, the same dynamic processes is actually what's been used in the, 1DX Mark III that's actually available in the full frame um, that's available in the C500 Mark II. Okay, so here are some things I could like write down because there's a lot, a lot of technical things to go through. So like I said, first of all, it actually does 5.4K RAW and the full readout in the entire um, sensor when shooting 4K. Um, there is no stabilization when you're shooting in RAW and there's no stabilization when you're shooting 60 frames per second. So you have to keep that in mind though. Uh, <clears throat> there is no crop and it has it uses the dual CF Express slots. So you have like two CF Express slots that you could get in there and actually get um, a fast readout of this RAW processing information. Um, the HDMI does not output RAW. I'm not sure about that. It was not enabled. Um, 
I would confirm that though. But generally, the sensor's dimension itself is about 35.9 by 23.9, so it's actually in the full frame category. You actually get full frame out of it, a one to one readout. So, um, if you have like um, a glass that supports it, you'll be able to like harness such capabilities. And you have the normal picture styles that are there, that in normal DSLR, but you could also activate Canon Log. And whenever you're shooting RAW, by default, it activates Canon Log every time you switch to RAW. So, um, a couple of things I wish was enabled in this camera if there was some way, the same way we have in BMD 6K that we're able to like load lookup tables and actually use them as reference guy. Uh, if we could have a way of loading show lots, that would have been, I don't know, brilliant. But since Canon is coming to 2020 aggressively, they're not holding back from the C500 Mark II that's basically eating up the C700 and whatever it does. Um, now the 1DX Mark III, who's going to stand as a B, an amazing B camera to the C500 Mark II. So, I really, it's going to really be an interesting 2020 for um, most camera companies and whatever they're coming out with. A couple of things that was really, really interesting. You know in the C200, you have the ability to correct plus screen, minus screen, up to a certain degree. And same thing in the C700, now in the C500 Mark II. Also in the 1DX, you have the ability to go to your custom white balance and dial in magenta or green or even go off axis to some other um, um, region and actually balance your shade of green or minus green that you're looking for to actually get the um, entire look you're looking for. Also, the ISO range presently is from about 100 to 800,019. I really don't know why I'll be shooting that high. There's a reason why we have lights, but yeah, there is that. As for price though, I'm guessing this camera may sit somewhere under $7,000 or lesser than $7,000 um, camera. So for photography, it's actually a great beast. I'm not a photographer, but there was this whole um, non-stop 20 frames per second, non-stop pure buffer, like it just keeps shooting, like it just keeps shooting. So yeah, it's gonna be like an amazing beast for like, um, most of the photographers out there so it's really really an interesting year for everyone and i'm going i'm actually looking forward to see how it plays out how the entire dynamics of um, people's demands and need plays out and uh, i hope to try on try it some more for some like in-depth review and test i hope to run more in-depth tests on the camera when i actually get my hands on the one and some summary rays and actually dive into details of what makes them tick you get hopefully and i'll share all that with you so the next time um, i'll be uploading footages that i shot and you'll be able to see most of the um, bits and pieces that we actually shot during the, during my time there with canon um, improvise adapt and overcome i'll see you next time